Hi, my name is Elise. Now I'm going to demonstrate the lab on acid-base titration curves. In the pre-lab questions for this experiment, you need to plot some theoretical titration curves for a strong acid, strong base titration, and for a weak acid, strong base titration. I'll be demonstrating the setup that you'll be doing to find the experimental data you need to plot an experimental titration curve to compare to your theoretical titration curve. So if you see by the setup, we have a magnetic stir plate. We've put the magnetic stir bar in our solution, which I've prepared of um, 0.1 molar HCl, pipetted 10 mils in, and diluted it to 100 mils total. I have filled the burette with 0.1 molar NaOH, and uh, I've, you notice I haven't bothered filling it right to the top to the zero point. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you fill it up as long as you can take a reading. So when I'm ready to start the titration, I'm going to take a reading of the volume, remembering to read the burette from the top down and recording to two decimal places. When I have that value ready to be written down, I will also read the pH off the pH meter for our starting uh, before adding any base. So note that the electrode is, uh, the tip is in the solution, but not so that it can be hit by the magnetic stir bar. The electrodes are sensitive, so you want to make sure that it's not hit, it could damage it. So um, before you start the titration, you want to make sure that the bottom of the pipette here has been filled with base as well, or the volume reading you will get off the burette will not be accurate. Before you begin, you'll also need to add some indicator. Just two or three drops is enough. In this case, I'm just adding phenolphthalein, which is colorless in acidic solution, as you can see. Nothing happened. But once we reach basic pH, it will turn to a pink-purple color. So when I'm ready to begin and I have my initial volume and initial pH recorded, I will start by adding about two mils of base to the acid solution. Now you want to plot many points along the curve and you want to be able to see the shape of the curve before there's the steep increase in pH. So after adding two mils, I will hit the measure button on the pH meter when it uh, grows steady, when the pH steadies, and then we can uh, record that new pH. When we're ready to add more, you just need to hit the measure button again on the pH meter Remember to always record the volume, the new volume after every addition so that you know exactly how much you've added. Remember you add about two mils at a time and you decrease that increment as you approach the uh, steep part of the curve. So you do not need to add an exact amount at any time. So if I add another couple of mils, and again, I would take a volume reading and a pH reading. As you notice that the pH is changing uh, by more than 0.2 or 0.3 pH units at a time, make sure to decrease how much you add to the titration. So after adding about 6 or 8 mils total, I will start adding only about 0.5 mils at a time and see how much the pH changes. If it's about 0.2 to 0.3 pH units, that's a good amount. If it starts jumping up farther, you may need to go down to as little as one drop at a time. All right, so when you've added enough base to reach the end point of the titration, or the equivalence point, you'll see the color change from clear to pink. Make a note of what, at what point, at what pH, and what volume the color does change. Um, you may see it a little bit lighter at first, but because in a strong acid, strong base titration, the pH changes very quickly um, when you get to the equivalence point, you may just see a really sharp jump in pH and the color will change really quickly. So then you will make a few more additions. This time, instead of adding smaller increments, you will start adding more at a time each time. Again, noting that you want the pH to change about 0.2 to 0.3 pH units with every addition. When it basically grows steady, when it, and it will be a nice purple when that happens, then uh, you will have enough points to plot the flat part of your titration curve at the top and you're done that titration. 
So in this lab, you'll also be titrating an antacid tablet to try the weak base strong acid titration and testing how good of a buffer the antacid tablet is. Um, the same principles apply. You will just have acid in the burette and your tablet dissolved in the beaker. And it will take a little bit more time after each addition for the pH to grow steady. But uh, you will just give it you know, one to two minutes and give it the same amount of time every time to consume the acid and then you will take a pH reading and volume reading just as in this case.